Welcome back to Y for Turbo. This is Nick. We are here in NHL 16. Be a GM mode with our Edmonton Oilers. And we are going into the second round off an intense seven game series against the San Jose Sharks. And uh, we came back. We won four in a row after losing the first three games to San Jose. And we battled back. As you can see, I'll show you here on the calendar. If you guys watched the last episode, you know, but I'll just let you know. Uh, these three games, we only had three goals in the first three games. And then we came back with some good offensive efforts, one four straight, and we headed in the second round where we are facing the Dallas Stars. And uh, Dallas got a pretty good team. So let's go and uh, let's go in and look at their lines. I know we did this at the end of last episode, but for those who are new, um, maybe to this channel or this series, we could go ahead and look at these um, right now. So last episode, oh, we had some injuries. That's why we shipped our lines around. We'll talk about those later. But this is the big one. The top line here has a 95 in Sagan, who's basically amazing at all facets of the game. You look at the defensive awareness. Look at the shooting. Look at the skating. Look at the senses. Look at the puck skills. Look at the physical. Try to list all of them. And uh, then we also have Jamie Benn here, who is also uh, equally as good, if not better, at all facets of the game. Uh, his overall is better. His physical is better. His defense is better. He's a great player. Um, actually, Sagan shooting is the only real stat besides maybe puck skills that's better in skating. So, uh, But it's not going to really matter. They're both OP as hell. And uh, Nyquist is also a great support winger for them. Um, they're just a line that can score the puck. So we got to shut down the first line. If the first line can't get going, then we're we're good you know uh they've got a lot of depth on this team an 86 on the third line here we have an 88 and a 288s on the third line though um because if you remember everly got injured we put him on the third line and then we started winning so we just kept him there we put him on the first line power play he still gets his minutes but he's now on the third line and we have the little pp line as the second line that's been doing work and uh, i wanted to show some fan art right here check this out the little PP line, David Perron, Brian Little, and uh, uh, Nicholas Patan. Yeah, I think his name is Nick, Nick Patan. Either way, they have the little PP line. They have been doing work for us, uh, counted for a good amount of our points in the last series, and hopefully they can get it done in this series. Obviously, we can shift the lines around if it becomes an issue. But uh, as you can see, the Dallas Stars, I think we've got them. I mean, they're a good team, but I, I think we've got them covered. I think we got them covered. They picked up Shattenkirk, it looks like. And, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Everybody else is pretty decent. And then, obviously, in goal, they've got Lettinen, Lettinen, hopefully, and Niemi. So, uh, these two guys, not too bad, not too good. Um, but I think we got them covered at least at goal. So, if we can get a few lame ones in, that'll be nice. And then, they've got these, uh, all these depth players scratched, so... Not too worried about anybody crazy coming into the lineup from an injury or anything like that. I think we are good. Patrick Sharp, if you guys saw, he's 37. He's only 81 overall at this point, but he's a good depth player for them. Even though it says he's a minor scoring forward, he's still, I think he's a good uh, fourth liner as a two-way forward. So, um, the only thing I shifted in the lines is since Perron is playing on the second line, I'll show you in uh, special teams, I went ahead and put Turris on the second line penalty kill because his... Uh, Defensive awareness are, is better, and just his, like, stick checking and stuff is better. So, um, hopefully, we'll be able to kill a few more penalties. Boyd Gordon's here because he's got 88 defense awareness and 90 face-offs. So, he's a really good uh, he's a good penalty killer, too. And then, obviously, McDavid and then Dano's up here. Same as last time on the series uh, because he's playing on the fourth line, which I'd like to move him up because he's a top six forward uh, potential. But in the lineup, we have him all the way on the fourth line. So maybe next year he'll be able to move up when we have to get rid of somebody like Perron or I don't know. Maybe we'll trade Perron at the deadline or um, how many years left is uh, there's three years left on Little. I think there's three years left on Perron. So these two guys we could potentially trade. Um, I might want to keep Little though. I like him more than Perron. But Perron's back up at an 86. So I'm okay with that for now. But this is a good we've got a good team. So. Let's go back and just jump into the simulation. We don't need to do anything else. We handled the uh, player meetings last episode at the end. Uh, if you haven't watched that episode, please go watch it. That was That is one of the better playoff series in all 
of my GM. I know I've spoiled it already saying that we beat them and showing you the calendar, but honestly, it was very intense and uh, definitely one of the better playoff episodes for sure, if not the best playoff episode. So I don't think we need to do anything else. The Dallas Stars were one exactly one win ahead of us. Uh, we had one less win than them. They were 41, 29, and 12, and we were 40, 30, and 12. So pretty even keeled, uh, not too bad. And we had that really, really rancid start at the beginning of the year with the injury to Taylor Hall. So uh, I think we probably would have been better off in the regular season. But it's the playoffs. The regular season does not matter at this point. And, uh, you know, they've got a lot up front. But I think we also, I mean, we got to remember, we've got McDavid. We've got Hall. And then we have Everly and Turris on the third line. Obviously, the little PP line's doing crazy. And we've got a better goaltending. So, okay, without further ado, we're actually on the power play right now. So, without further ado, the first period of game one, they get one on us. So, Nyquist, so that first line has broken through. There was probably a good assist from one of those 95-plus overall guys. Um, if not, it was the D, but still. So they can, they can show that they can score. We are out shooting them by one one shot, but that doesn't mean anything when you're behind. Um, so let's just go right in the second period, get get at least one back, and uh, stop them from scoring. Second period. Okay, they get one on the fourth line, and we get one from Clendenning, our all-star um, defender, who uh, who's always, like, so far, except for the one year that Lindholm was a little bit better, He's always our leading defensive scorer, Clendenning. He's a good offensive defenseman uh, who's still growing, so he'll get better. Patrick Sharp on the fourth line. He may be on the power play, but I don't think so. Um, but if the fourth line scored, that really sucks because I thought we had a better fourth line than them. So third period, let's go ahead and real-time sim this, and let's jump right in. We are out shooting them pretty heavily um, at the moment, and we get one right there. Our fourth line connects um against Kari Lettinen and Glenn Denning has a score so Glenn Denning and Glenn Denning have goals I always I've always wanted to unite them on a team because I always thought that was funny because I remember when Glenn Denning was oh we're on the power play when Glenn Denning wasn't in the NHL and uh, he wasn't in NHL games I was always trying to find him and uh or I would make him to put him on teams and I'd always use Glenn Denning as the play-by-play -play name because it's so close anyway it's 2-2 two -two, um I, I was talking, so I didn't really get excited. We're going into overtime in game one. So even keeled it is, we are out shooting them by six shots. But um, once again, it just proves the point that we are a pretty similar team to the Dallas Stars. A lot of big firepower up front. And uh, what we lack defensively and goalie-wise, we make up for in the 95-plus players that we have. So what can we do? Uh, we need to keep out shooting them because I never think that that's a bad thing. And we need to... We need to just score. We, I mean, there's not much to say. We got to keep it out of our end. We can't let those guys who are 95 plus get the puck on our end, get good shots. Um, just keep blocking shots. Keep playing defensively because we're still playing pretty defensive hockey. There's been almost 30 shots and there's two goals. That's really not bad. So uh, let's just real-time sim it. Here we go. There's not much to say. We just got to jump in and do it. Um, oh, God. And now we're on the penalty kill. But now we're instantly on the power play. Oh, neither of us, <laughs> neither of us uh, takes a shot, really. Oh, God. I'm just watching their shots go up and ours stay the same. Come on, boys. Let's go. It, it, all it takes is one shot. Are we going to two OTs? We are going to two OTs with the shots exactly 41-41, exactly tied. And uh, it was in that last minute. They got a few shots to tie up the shots. But we are going to our second overtime. So this is the first time we've gone to double OT this year. So hopefully our guys are fueled up. Let's um, I think Morazic probably has more stamina than the older Lettinen. So let's hope that Lettinen uh, drops the ball and lets in a softy, and we just get done with this game because we can't risk uh, injuries. We can't risk uh, being burnt out and getting a, a lame goal again. So let's just try for that first goal in the first 10 minutes or even like the first two minutes. I want to get a quick one. So I'm starting the sim. Here we go. Shots are even and they get one. Uh, was it Jordy or Jamie Ben? I'm not sure. Either way, it was them. So they get one in the first two minutes. That two, first two minutes curse of overtime has come back to haunt Morazic. And the three stars of the game are all Dallas stars. Ben. Oh, okay. So it was Jamie Ben. Uh, Lettinen and Nyquist. So 
Well, their stars are going. That first line, that first line is going. Okay, I, we don't have to worry about it. Um, we'll worry it about. We'll worry about it in it, the next loss. We'll worry about it. But I don't think there's going to be a next loss. Need to play smart. McGinn's the only one. Okay, we were doing better when everybody was on board with this. So, not much to do. I'll just um. We're just gonna go in the same the same team, the uh, the same lines. That's what it's gonna be. So first period of game two. There we go. Patan, little PP lines getting it on. Carry Lettinen. So uh, they have Lettinen in the net. Um, I believe that's the second line. I don't think uh, that was on the power play. I don't remember if we kept Patan on the power play. I think he is, but um, or maybe we took him off for tourists. I'll have to go check. Either way, it's one of the PPs, and uh, he gets one from right inside the circle, so that's pretty good. So let's keep it up. We are getting out shot. I'd like to see some more shots and more possession, because that just means we have more possession in their zone, more possession time, and uh, leads to more scoring. So second period. There we go. The little PP line. There we go. We got the fan art, and we've got them producing. Uh, if you guys want to send me fan art, by the way, just hit me up on Twitter at uh at y for turbo or facebook facebook.com slash y for turbo even tumblr y for turbo dot tumblr dot com somebody was asking how to send it uh, i got it on twitter yesterday and uh so yeah just if you want to if you want to send me uh funny pictures and stuff like that, that that would be so cool that's like i love that johnny spurman does that and that's so cool that y'all are doing it for me that's really cool so third period we're gonna go real time sim we are getting out shot by one shot not a huge deal we are winning like I said in the last game, it's not a big deal if we're getting outshot but winning. Um, but we really want to hold off and lead, uh, you know, lead the game in shots and scoring. Um, and if, you know, if there's under 30 shots, it's really a big chance that our goalie is going to have a good game. So let's try to hold him to that. And let's head into the third period. Here we go. We get one right away. Churis gets one on the third line, presumably. We are on the power play. And uh, we do not capitalize. But there's uh, 12 minutes left in the game. Uh, half the game or half the period is over at this point. I think we should be good. We're edging them out. We're out shooting them now. I think they're on their heels. Yeah, we, we got this. We got this, boys. And Peter Morazic with the shutout to the stars. I bet he's the first star. There he is. And two of the little PP line guys are up there for the second and third stars. Um, I'm sure Perron maybe had an assist or two uh patan with the goal little with the goal and two to assist great game for little and the Morazic 30 saves zero goals against what a champ Ooh, i'm liking it so there we go we have rebounded from the first game just fine coming back with a shutout victory and uh we go into this next game with 89 locker room chemistry going on the up and uh yeah cool no player meetings to deal with uh let's just go in i don't think we need to change anything little pp is working out fine it's not the size. It's how you use it, guys. Okay. God, I'm so sorry. Okay, we are in Dallas. So let's see this. For, let's just go right away. Let's, um, what do they call it? Weather the, uh, weather the storm. Just go in there and get the first goal, quiet the crowd. And then we got easy, smooth sailing in the, uh, in the eye of the storm here in the Stars Arena. So first period, 1-1. One, one. Nyquist gets another one. But Dreisaitl there on the first line. So both right wingers on the first line grab a goal from basically identical spots you can see both right there almost you know perfectly symmetrical just a little bit he's a little bit closer to the goal dry settles a little farther out that's pretty cool actually so um let's not allow them to get too many uh too many goals here they are um getting out shot by us 12 to 9 and uh we know that the first line is awoken with nyquist getting the goal here with one minute left, we actually took the lead uh, halfway through the period. But with one minute left, they tied it up. So let's make sure to weather that storm because that's the dragon we do not want to wake up. And uh, yeah, that, that's that's all I got to say. First line, just don't let them score. So uh, our first line, maybe we could shift around to get the scoring in different areas because, you know, Taylor Hall and mcdavid even dry saddle they're all pretty good defensive players as well as offensive players so i don't think we're gonna have a problem um i think we'll be good so second period here wow they go up too so uh richie uh, his name might be brad or something brad richie and then jonathan klinberg um that's all right i guess uh klinberg more than richie i think is richie's only like an 83 but uh 
that sucks. That kind of sucks the momentum out of the whole game. They get them late into the second period. So third period's got to be a big one from us. We got to come back from this. We are out shooting them. Let's get a quick one in the first five. Come on, guys. Let's get a quick one. We're on the power play. No excuses. Oh, geez. Maybe we got to shift around. Oh, and they get another one. Uh, Smith gets one there on Mrazek from, the, uh, from a weird angle. And they're on the power play now. Can we get one or two real late? Ah, just some momentum shifting. Yeah, we get one, but I don't think we're going to have enough time. Maybe if we, it was one goal, but Taurus, thanks for chipping in that last one. So uh, look at these. These are almost, I mean, if you, they're almost the same area. That's kind of weird. So let's see that. Kerry Lattinen, Klinberg, and Gustav Nyquist. Um, good game on their part. They were able to edge us out, and uh, we didn't get a goal after the original 1-1 first period. We didn't get a goal until late in the third when it was too late for us to even come back. So what do we need to do? I think we should shift around the power play. I think, oh, wait, that guy wants to talk to me. What do you got to say, my friend? Uh, getting disappointed with my ice time. Okay, I can see your point. You're a 7th D, dude. Like, what? What? He might be on the top six, but... uh. You know what? While we're here, I'll just I'll see where he is. And if he's like in the top four, I'm not going to change it because he's he hasn't talked all. OK, he is down there, but I don't want to put Jones down there and I want the top six guys to play. Um, Yeah, dude, I'm sorry. You're probably just going to play there. I'll put you in the uh, I'll put you on the you're on the first line power play. Like how much more do you need, dude? Here, I'll put you on the extras. Here, Leduc, get down there. There you go. Now you got a couple more minutes. But, uh, yeah, I can't. Sorry. Just not going to worry too much about your ice time since you're really not growing as much as I need you to. All right. So I uh, didn't want to really shift the normal line lineups because we mostly just score five on five and shorthanded at this point. But what could we do about uh, this? Uh, we want to leave Everly up on the first line because of. Hmm. Because of how he's been playing. Maybe we take little off. As much as Little is a good player, maybe we switch him for Patan, or should we put, maybe, uh, hey, wait, check this out. Maybe we put Patan, no, he's got a decent shooting category. Um, does Lindholm? Yeah, Lindholm kind of does too. And uh, here, one sec, my TV's doing something weird. All right, sorry about that. So, Little, I kind of want to keep up here. But I was thinking maybe changing out one of these guys. Uh, maybe not Nurse. Nurse has that rocket. And uh, hmm. I don't know about Baylou either. Um, you know what? We'll try it. We got to try something. We got to come back with this. So um, I'll put... I was thinking of putting Patan up here. Yeah, Patan. And he's left-handed. Oh, they're both left. Yeah, so we'll put Patan up here. Maybe that'll add a little bit of scoring because we're not we're not scoring on the power play. That's the problem. Like in all the games so far, we've we've scored like once on the power play. So I'll do that. Um, I don't know how that really works in this game. It worked really well in 15, putting a a forward on the uh, on the defensive side on the power play. Don't know about 16 too much. Haven't had too much uh, experience with it, but we're going into what is this game four? So um, the series is two to one, and I think I think we can come back this game. It's it's a pretty even series. Let's just win this one, win the next one, and then we're, we've got it in the palm of our hands. So first period, they get two. So I'm guessing it's Jamie Ben and Val Nashushkin, both really good players. And look where this one was scored. Come on, come on, Mrazek. All right, not much to say. Just don't let in those soft ones. Second period. Come on, guys. Got to quell that little offensive fit we're having right now. I'm just going to go right into it. There's not much to say other than get some goals, boys. Get some goals. All we need is one right now, and then we'll work towards the next one. But right now, we need a quick one, hopefully before 10 minutes. Okay, guys, you're letting your season slip away. If I know we went down, you know, three to none in the last series, but... I don't like the precedent it sets. I don't want to have a heart attack each time I decide to do a commentary. So Lettinen, Nishushkin, and Sagan. Sagan with the multiple assist game. And Lettinen with the shutout. So not good. 
Not good that we got shut out. Um, and Peron has been injured. Of course he has. Peron has been injured. All right. And again, you're coming in. Um, and Everly's going back up. Come on out, McGinn. I'll put, um, we'll put Dano on the third line and we'll put McGinn on the fourth line since he actually is. Yeah, I think that would be a, come on, there we go. That'd be a good change. And then, uh, where is Peron? Is he on any of the special teams? I think he's just, no, I think it took him off completely. Yeah, cool. Okay. He's not on anything. Um, any extras that he was on? No, doesn't look like it. So yeah, I think we are all good. So that, that worked out okay, I guess. But the little PP line has been broken up. No, no. Um, actually, what's the date? I think it said it there. Um, so he won't be back until the series is done. So that's no good. So it's three to one in the series. Um, we can do this. We can do it. I know we've got the injury, but we can do this. I got to hold the team meeting. I almost forgot. All oh, you guys cringing. Don't worry. I almost forgot, but I got it. We have it in us to extend the series. And Peron, the injured one. McGinn isn't even... T Are you kidding me? <laughs> EA, come on, dude. Now McGinn's in the lineup, and he's not taking the advice to heart or anything. Now Peron's injured, and he's taking the advice to heart. What is the problem here? If I had scratch people, they would be... Jeez. All right, no problem, no problem. We're gonna win this game, we got it. We got it in the palm of our hands. Let's just shut them down. They're only getting like a couple goals a game. If we can go back to getting those five goal games, we can do it. They've got an 85 overall goalie, come on boys. And of course, I didn't simulate in time. So Cody, you can guess one on Peter Mrazek within the first two minutes. So let's jump first period, one zip. Shots are tied. Cody Eakin got that quick one. I'm hoping that it wasn't because I weighed it to simulate. So uh, we'll just jump to the third period. Here we go. Second period. 3-3. Three, three. Okay, we come back. Oh, we got to stop Sharp from scoring on that fourth line. But McGinn in his first game back gets one. Rupert gets one. And Nurse get one. So three guys who have been quiet this round so far get one. And we have three goals and are out shooting them 24-17. All we got to do is go in to the third period with the same amount of vigor that we went into the second period with. Yeah, they got two goals, but we got three goals, okay? So we can come in. If they get two goals in the next period, we're going to get three, okay? It's going to be 6-5. Who cares? We're going to win it in regulation in... Uh, actually, we're in Edmonton. So in Edmonton, we're going to win. So let's do this right now. Times eight, real-time simulation, 24 to 18 shots. We get one right off the bat. McGinn with a multi-point game. Maybe we should have been playing this guy all year. If he has a good, if he has a good playoff series, we might have to re-sign him. Once again, we waste a power play. But look at that. Patan, the little PP line, wants to stay relevant. Now it's a uh oh shoot, who do we put there? It's a little PE line with Everly. <laughs> oh man. And we get another one, Dano, who got the empty netter. So six to three. We come back in. Very nice fashion. Cody Aiken got two goals, but Turris gets three assists. McGinn gets two goals on the first star in his first game in the Stanley Cup playoffs in... Did he play last year? I don't know. But either way, he is doing work, and maybe we should have played him all year. So good on him on the fourth line. And uh, whew, yeah, nice. Good game. Good game, boys. All right. Uh, Piranha is available to play. So, okay. Here's... Here's when it gets kind of scary. Do we keep McGinn in? I was thinking maybe pulling Glenn Denning off, but he's got really good defensive stats. McGinn doesn't have very good defensive stats, but he's getting the puck in the net. Ooh, this is a scary one. This is a scary one. So Perron technically isn't available for a couple days, so I'm, I'm afraid he might get re-injured in the next game so we might not want to play him but i'm thinking maybe we try to oh, it's a really rough one to take a gamble on because the series is three to two this is this is why i wish i could be live streaming this right now so i could ask you guys right now what i should do because this whole lineup is really great i mean we could take boyd gordon out but like look at his like face-offs and defense awareness i could move glendening over to the center 
and then put Perron on the fourth line. You know what? I might do that. Boyd Gordon's been okay, but like at the same time, I'd rather keep Glenn Denning out at this point because he's got the same defense awareness, decent face-offs, and he's better overall like shooting and stuff like that. So the fourth line could become kind of our secret weapon, especially with Perron down there. And if Perron gets re-injured, we just bring Boyd back out. I know it's 90 face-offs, but we'd be changing out for an 87 face-off instead and bringing Perron back, who is an 86 overall on the fourth line. I'm going to try it, guys. I I think I believe I believe in taking the risks. And uh, as much as it might hurt Boyd Gordon's feelings. Uh, okay, so Perron is an 85 right now. So let's just look at the, I think it was just the penalty kill. Yeah, so we can't put Perron there. We've got to bring out, uh, you know what we could do? We could put Churis here to take the face off and then put Glenn Denning on the wing. Or wait, does Everly have a pretty good... Nah. We could put Everly on the wing for the penalty kill because then we could get maybe a shorthanded goal because we don't have to worry about anybody getting ice time because he's got better... He actually has better defensive awareness than Glenn Denning. Uh, not as good physical, but it's better defensive awareness and stick checking. Um... Plus, he's faster. So maybe th that actually might be a good idea because then we could get maybe some shorties. I don't know. I'm not going to count on the shorthanded goals, but at the same time, it'd be really nice to get one of those shorties. Uh, and he wasn't on any of the extras, I don't think. So, all right. Boyd Gordon is scratch, and we got Perron down there. This is looking like a really deep team right now. McGinn's on a hot streak. Now, remember, that's the only reason why we're keeping him out here. He got two goals in the last game. And he is just doing really well. So hopefully, oh yeah, we have him for a year after this. So we don't even have to worry about that. Yeah, two goals, the shooting percentage on two shots is 100%. He's a plus two, really helping out that fourth line. So I'm thinking the fourth line's going against each other. This is really going to help, especially with Perron. He's going to be he's gonna be able to, to do some work. And uh, Perron is not on... He's not on anything right now, so he might get sad about ice time, but the biggest thing is him not getting re-injured. So we're going to do a team meeting, and we're going to go right into the next game. Clendenian and Perron get uh, some help there in the realm of morale, and let's just look at the calendar real quick. So, yeah, okay, we just got to win the next two. Um, I For some reason, I... I thought it said he wasn't good until the 14th, so I thought it was maybe like the last game, and I just missed something, but nope. Still got two games left. So this game, just a routine game. Come on, guys. Let's just, we just got to, we just got to win this game. It's the, of the utmost importance. So I got to simulate right away. So first period, there we go. Kyle Turris, uh, possibly on the power play. It does not let us know in this iteration of NHL. Um, that's too bad because Legacy does it. Um, I mean, we could go in and see penalties, but. No, they were all like against us. So no, it was not on the power play. Actually, I should check that out next time. Penalties and stuff like that. So we're taking too many penalties, but at least we are winning. Kyle Churis gets one uh, nearly from the point right at the top of that circle on the far side. And uh, we're going into the second period with only four shots, but we're winning. So we need to start getting some shots. Uh, we did take a lot of penalties, though, so I'm not too worried about the shots. Uh, we were probably in the penalty box for a long time. So... What do we have to capitalize on? Getting more shots, not taking penalties. That's the biggest thing. Do not take penalties. Draw penalties. Don't take them. And Turris, keep doing what you do. Uh, McGinn, get hot again, please. All right. Second period. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> little Perron and Rupert. So Perron on the fourth line. My uh, my little him being, the, uh, him being on the fourth line and that little secret weapon fourth line has worked. And Little, the little PP line, not not together right now, but working out and Rupert. So let's go into third period with the same amount of momentum. We can do it. All right. So third period, we're going to go real-time sim. And uh, we did catch up in shots, but I'd like to get some more shots and uh, park the bus. Just park the bus. Keep it in their zone. Get some shots. Kill this penalty. Good job. And we're on the power play. Oh, okay. We don't take advantage of another power play that is a looming issue with this team not taking advantage on the power play uh but so far it's been working out with patan on the power play he's not getting any points per se and we're not really getting any offense on the power play but we are going to win game six there we go marazic when he comes up he comes up big 
the shutout victory, Rupert and Turris also had stars in this game with uh, a goal and an assist for Rupert and one goal for Turris, um, both with two hits. So, Mrazic, great game. I'd like to see one more great game out of you, and then we can just flip the script. We've been playing way too many games. Way too many games. I don't want to go to seven games in the next series. Let's just get it over with in, like, four. <laughs> That'd be nice. Um, okay, I'm just going to do four weeks here for, uh, we'll do, we'll do four weeks. All right, let's hold this team meeting. We can close it out tonight and, uh, they can also close it out. It is a game seven after all. So Clendenning Little and Perron are all looking happy. I'm keeping the lines the same because we're winning. You know, why not? Uh, and I don't think we need to talk about anything else. Let's just go into it and, uh, win or lose. We've had a great season. Um, but I definitely like to get to the next round. So let's really do that. We've lost our connection to EA service. So first period, Tyler Sagan, did we wake the sleeping bear, the sleeping dragon? Did it awoken? Did, did it awaken? Um, we're getting out shot five to 10, 10 to five. And, uh, whew, we're in Edmonton. There's no excuse guys. There's no excuse. Come on boys. Uh, not much to say other than get those shots. Um, let's see if there were penalties. Okay, Val Nashushkin took one, but then we got two here. A hooking minor and a tripping minor. So we're still taking more penalties than they are. So we really got to stop taking penalties, especially in the first period. Really got to stop. So let's have a big three to five goal second period, please. The period of the long shift. Let's do it. Second period. Tyler Sagan. Uh-oh. All right, I was hoping we could at least have tied it up in that second period, but Sagan comes back with one. Good, you know, good thing it didn't it didn't go even worse. Good thing only one goal happened against. But at the same time, we are a better team than this. We are riding the wave of momentum. We need to quell this scoring opportunity that he keeps getting. Tyler Sagan cannot be left alone, guys. I know it's hard to cover an entire first line, but if somebody's got to get a shot, let it be Nyquist. Don't let it be Sagan or Ben. Let it be Nyquist or one of the defensemen. Please. I mean, we have five guys on the ice when they have five guys on the ice. Let's stop two of them. You know what I mean? Uh, even though Mrazic's a good shot and everything, I'd much rather have him taking a shot against, or uh, sorry, Nyquist. I would rather have Nyquist getting a shot against Mrazic rather than Sagan or Ben. So, you know, as much as we have to cover everybody, let's let's shut down Sagan we cannot afford him to have an amazing game which he's already really had but only 16 shots on that and there's already two goals against come on boys okay third period we have started simulating we're on the power play uh that was a quick one so another power play we do we got to capitalize see we we already had two power play opportunities we did not capitalize on it's 10 minutes left in the game oh man uh-oh uh-oh oh no and we get shut out in a game seven. Wow. Just when I thought we were going to come back, be able to do what we did in the last series, it just did not last. And we just didn't have the threat that we had last year. Last year, we had the threat of Datsuk. We had the threat of Marlowe. And uh, this, this year, it just did not all add up for us. A lot of other teams were a lot better. Uh, dare I say it, the San Jose Sharks were a lot better than us, it seemed like, on, in some aspects of the game. And I feel like I feel like a lot of aspects of the game, the Dallas Stars were better. But we took them to seven games. And, you know, I mean, honestly, a big part of that is managerial-wise, myself, you know, we're growing a lot of players. But there's only so many players that we can sign. There's only so much we can do under the salary cap with McDavid signed and Hall signed. So I think our first year with a real signed McDavid was okay, especially with salary cap restrictions. Because think about it. Had he still been making like nine fifty a year, nine nine hundred thousand fifty a year, instead of the eight point whatever million, um, we would have been able to sign one more stud. And just think of that, one more 86 to 87 plus player in the top six would have been insane with the amount of depth we had. And, uh, you know, it could be, you know, we did have an injury in one of these games. We ended up winning the game after that. We bring, bring Perron back. He's not going to be totally good until this day. So 
there's a lot of excuses that could be made. Maybe I made some mistakes on changing the lines, but you know, it, it's hard to tell because we won two games in a row, both at Dallas and away, like at home, um, with those lines. So I figured going into this game seven, we've got the momentum with what we've got. Maybe scratching Boyd Gordon wasn't a, wasn't a good idea. Maybe shift around the power play even more. But at the end of the season, I still think that we had a really, really good team. We were just we were just one piece away, I think. And a lot of you might say it was the goaltender. But he had a few shutouts, you know what I mean? He had a few shutouts in this series and in this whole play, the playoffs as a whole. But uh, yeah, let's go ahead and look at playoff stats for the players. And uh, ooh, if you also, if you guys want me to check out anything else, please let me know. I'll do it in the next video. And uh, yeah, so Brian Little had an amazing playoffs with 10 points in 14 games uh, there on the second line. Turris had nine points. Uh, Dano had really great playoffs with eight points on the fourth line. That's awesome, dude. Drysdale had really good. And you'll kind of see, um, I know it, it doesn't show the first liners up here like McDavid and Hall, but you got to think about it. Both times we were facing very defensive first lines who had superstars on their first line. So it's not like we're always going to be able to get goals against those first line defensemen and those first line forwards with our first line. So I don't really blame them. McDavid and Hall, three and four points respectively. Respectively, um, they were both minus fives though, so that's no good. And then uh, Clint Denning was our. Uh, oh no, Lindholm was our, our leading point man for D, but he was tied with Clint Denning, so whatever. But he was a plus five, so that's better to me. And then we'll go ahead and look at goaltenders. And Mrazic. Somebody said that Gillies played a game, did he there? Yeah, he got a win. He got that game seven win. That's pretty awesome. He had a really good save percentage and, uh, you know, some goals against, but he still won. But look at Mrazic, guys. Like, you can't blame it on Mrazic. It was definitely our lack of offense. In the last, think about it, in the last series, the, the games that we won all in a row, we won them by a decent margin. Like, we got five goals in that one game, you know. The one game that we did win by a good margin was that, what, six to, was it six to three or is it six to zero? I don't remember, but either way, we got, we only got one real game of big offense and our team is based around a lot, a lot of offense. So the fact that Mrazic can come in and post a 1.8 goals against in all 14 games, um, you know, I know that Gillies played the one game. Um, and then a 0.935, basically 0.94 save percentage. Uh, that shows a lot to me. So I'm not worried about goaltending. Obviously, next year, Gillies is going to be the up and comer. And he's going to help us out a ton, especially if he jumps up to about an 87. And uh, yeah, I, I, I don't know. I think... Obviously, we could have done better. I think it's a disappointing season. I think it's a good. It was a good season, but it was a disappointing season. We had the bad, um, we had the bad regular season, and then you know a second round exit for the former Stanley Cup winners. You know that kind of looks familiar with this year being uh, the Chicago Blackhawks getting eliminated. Then, uh, in real life, that is. But uh, whew, you know, it it's one of those things. It's just. I think it's just gonna. It's just going to happen. I, I I don't know. Just one of those things. So, hey, I, I don't know. I don't know what else to say. It's whenever we lose, I feel, I just feel defeated. And I feel, <laughs> oh, I don't know. I just feel kind of exhausted. That's a good word. There we go. So, um, I am looking through the comments right now on the last video. Just making sure you guys uh, didn't want to see anything. And I don't think. We can see anything. Nope, I think you guys were good. So if you want to see anything in the next episode, we will be heading into the draft and then re-sign and free agency. So please, in the comments below, let me know uh, what we should go after in the draft um, and what we should go after for free agents. Um, as you probably already know, Turris uh, would need to be re-signed if we want to re-sign him. Um, and... Do we trade anybody at the draft? Do we trade Perron? Is this that year? I know you guys were calling for it last year, but is this that year? Do we trade Mrazic and go with Gillies? I think it's about the time when we probably go for Mrazic. 
because uh, we'd have to re-sign him. And I think he'd want a decent amount being like such a good goalie. And yes, he was very good for us. But do we re-sign him or do we just go with Gillies and have Booth back him up or, you know, because we've got some players available to help out. Um, and I think that overall, Peter Mrazek is a good goalie, but if we don't have to pay two starters, I'd be very happy with that because then that allows us to get some more depth. So let me know all your thoughts down in the comments below. You guys are great. I love all my subs. Um, it's, it's going insane right now. If you're not subscribed, I obviously still have deep, um, deep, <laughs> deep feelings and love for you because you're stopping by taking time out of your day to watch my videos. That's insane. But please consider hitting that sub button. Um, every day I post videos like this, uh, also NBA and Madden and stuff like that. We also just talk about stuff here in the comments. It's a lot of fun here on Y for Turbo and your voices are always welcome here in the comments or in a message. If you want to tell me something privately, uh, remember fan art at Y for Turbo on Twitter, anything and everything is welcome. Even me getting slapped around in the fine or in the uh, Stanley cup playoffs by the stars, anything like that, feel free to do it. And uh, we will see you next time out on the ice.